Our World Series is brought to you by... Husqvarna Forest and Garden Products. Bridgestone, the science of performance. And Valvoline Motor Oil. Surfers Paradise Australia, the venue for round three of the IndyCar World Series. And we now see a tie at the top of the driver's points. Pole position man Jimmy Vassar leads them round on the final one of their warm-up laps. And the single point that he got on Saturday afternoon in the heat of the Queensland sun ties him with compatriot Scott Pruitt, top of the driver's table after two races. So Vassar, 30 years old, Reynard Honda, and one win under his belt for the target team. And with a qualifying lap record, uh, setting himself ahead of Scott Pruitt. Alessandro Zanardi, the Reynard Honda in third position, and the fastest of the Mercedes-Benz drivers, Paul Tracy in the Penske in fourth, ahead of Michael Andretti and Christian Fittipaldi on row three of the grid, Parker Johnstone and Greg Moore, the young rookie, on row four. So the weather set fair in Australia, as you would expect in the middle of the summer, and we will join our American commentary team of David Hobbs and Christopher Tate. Jimmy Vassar, his first ever pole, and Honda's first on a road course. Alongside him, Scott Pruitt, who is now the co-points leader with Vassar after two races. In row two, Alessandro Zanardi, who currently leads the Rookie of the Year standings, and Paul Tracy, who has not finished a race in 1996. In row three, it is Michael Andretti, the only time he has not been on the front row here in Australia, and Christian Fittipaldi with his best qualifying effort of 1996. In row four, Parker Johnson, who had a crash in the morning warm-up this morning, and alongside him, the young Canadian sensation, Greg Moore, who won 10 of 12 Indy Lights races in 1995. In row five, Andre Ribeiro won two weeks ago at Rio de Janeiro and his teammate, Adrian Fernandez. In row six, it is Mauricio Guzman. His teammate, Blundell, is here but won't race today. And Gilles de Ferran, who led Rio for a while before running out of fuel. In row seven, Bobby Rahal, who has the most starts of any active IndyCar driver, and 27-year-old Robbie Gordon. In row eight, Raul Bosell still looking for his first IndyCar win, and Alan Jr. currently tied for third in the points. In row nine, Brian Herter in his third IndyCar season, and Emerson Fittipaldi, who won here in 1992. In row 10, Roberto Moreno, who raced IndyCars 10 years ago for Gallus, and Stephanie Johansson making his 60th IndyCar career start. Working our way through the rest of the grid, Carlos Guerrero and Eddie Lawson start in row 11, and in row 12, Juan Manuel Fangio and Jeff Krosnoff struggling with the Toyota engines, and on his own at the back of the grid, it is Hiro Matsushita, who is just a little bit off the pace, uh, but is making the field once again for this IndyCar race. The cars making their way around on a couple of their pace laps, They'll bring them around. Let's take a look at this track and an interesting feature with it, Christopher. Yes, well, in an attempt to slow down the back straight there, the Esplanade, this year the uh, second chicane is just a little bit tighter than it was, but interestingly, they seem to be lapping guy uh, a little quickly, more quickly than they were last year. Well, yeah, they tried to reduce uh, the speeds through that series of tight left, uh, right flicks. Uh, they've introduced a new gear change, so these guys can be really busy now, probably 2,100 gear changes through this race. Here's a look at the point standings after two rounds so far. Vassa, by getting the point for getting the pole, now ties Pruitt for the lead in the championship. Hunter with a great finish in Rio is in third. Andre Ribeiro, of course, 20 points coming from his win at Rio de Janeiro. Someone we didn't see there in that top point, Robbie Gordon, who with a good finish at Rio, could be way ahead in the championship, but had that off towards the end of the race. Yep, that was an extraordinary feature of the closing laps at Rio. Another interesting feature, Christopher, about this track, you talk about it's one of the only ones where they go left. Yes. Very unusual to have a one turning left so quickly. And here we have Vassar leading the cars around to his first ever pole. 59 career starts in IndyCar. Five times he's been on the front row, but this is his first pole. Congratulations to him. Great effort. The Honda Firestone Reynard combination proving to be the one to have in 1996. Although Scott Pruitt right behind him, also on the Firestones, but with the Ford motor, is proving to be very, very strong too. They're saying not so much horsepower for the Ford, but the fact that they've set up the end, the, the, the car so well on this track is what's making Pruitt quick and also Michael Andretti. So uh, the Ford have actually sort of come out and said, listen, we just don't 
and how the horsepower of the Honda does. Honda's being very, very quick. The question is, can Firestones win on a street course? They've won all the ovals going back to Michigan in IndyCar racing and, of course, the IRL racing as well. So Firestone having a great year. So they come around, race cars should be peeling off. We should be getting a green flag this time by Christopher. It looks as though they're going to form up. Oh, Vess has jumped a little bit. Maybe they're not going to let them go this time. I don't think we're going to get a green flag with that because Vassa had a huge jump. No, we don't get a yellow flag. So uh, for the third consecutive IndyCar race, we have a yellow flag start. We didn't have much luck getting started in Miami, not much luck getting started in Rio. And now Vassa, first time on the pole, up to him to bring the field around. But it looked like he made a bit of a jump. Just going back to that point we made about the, tr the track, Christmas, one of the only street courses where they make so many left-hand turns. Yes, rather ironic, really, because everybody always thinks of uh, left-hand turns being a feature of the oval tracks. This is a very rare occurrence. This uh, surface paradise circuit is mostly left-handed turns, and that's the way it runs. The point there about Vassar is that uh, it is the first time, it's always a little tense, and we've seen this before for all the new pole sitters. They uh, get a little overexcited, and I think Jimmy just jumped out there. There, we just saw Guzman go past in the picture. Just to update you, Blundell has come to the trap, but is not racing. Here's some of the results over the last five years here. The only man to win from pole, Nigel Mansell, back in 1993, with some unusual winner's names in here. I say unusual, because John Andretti, obviously, an upset victory in the hall in the first race. Fittipaldi was not expected to win in 1992. Mansell wins his first ever IndyCar race. Michael Andretti comes back from Formula 1 and wins the first race for him and, and Reynard. The, the first race for Reynard, indeed. And last year, Paul Tracy wins a race, but in his uh, racing debut for the Newman Haas team. Now, of course, he's back with the Penske team, taking some of that Newman Haas information back with him. He has been the quicker of the two drivers for Penske, definitely this year, quicker than Al Unser Jr. He's been going pretty good, not so for Al Unser Jr. As you can see, sun beating down on the track. They've had a few support races. There should be some rubber down. There should be a good track surface, good racing temperatures. Uh, always a good race here in Australia, apart from the long rain delay we had uh, a couple of years ago that uh, caused it to go running late. And then, in fact, that race was shortened, the one that Michael Andretti won because it was getting so dark. Here's uh, Vassa, then we work our way through the field. The rookies, Alessandro Zanardi, as we mentioned, now leading that after a great finish at Rio. Greg Moore's had two great runs, picked up very few points, so that comes from a seventh place finish at Miami, uh, although he made that whole lap back and could well have gone on to win that race. Greg Moore's proving to be a sensation in IndyCar racing. And not just Greg Moore and Zanardi there with, with the points. It's worth saying that there were nine drivers here last year with the IndyCars who are not here this year, and we've got eight new uh, drive, new to the circuit drivers out there. Been very impressed by Zanardi's performance as well. That's another excellent qualifying performance, don't you think? Guy? Well, he performed very well at Rio on an oval, and he said he didn't expect, of course, that to happen on an oval. He would expect it to come from somewhere like here on a tight street course where he's used to running in Formula One and the other forms of racing. And I am expecting to see a great result from Zanardi here. And as we've seen some upset winners here previously, I think he may well be an upset winner here at Australia. Well, I this circuit upset because he's so new to the series. Exactly. I mean, this this circuit always known for producing a surprise, and it looks as though Jimmy's learnt his lesson and could well come down to the line in good order here. Guys. The car's nice and tight and closed up. Vassa starts to make a run. They'll get a green flag this time. Pruitt goes with him. Along comes Zanardi, and Paul Tracy will fit in right behind as they race down. And they're going to go right through the gears on there. You see Tracy making a great move past Zanardi to pick up the third spot. Through the left-hander. This is where we've seen lots of problems in the past. Riding the curbs, Johnson getting very high. All very tight there, and I think that was Al Unser there, there being squeezed out on the... But he just seems to have ridden up over the curbs. Well, yeah, he's fine. He's running without too much problem. And they're all there through and down through the back of the field. As we were saying earlier, another difficult qualifying for the Toyota engine cars. 25 cars taking the green flag down in Australia as we get ready for 65 laps or 295 kilometers around this beautiful 4.54 kilometer track. 12 turns on a temporary circuit. Lots of braking points, lots of downshift points. We're going to see lots of overtaking here in Australia today. As now, along comes Jimmy Vassar to lead the field with Scott Pruitt right behind him. These two lead the championship as we speak. Looks like they're going to be able to pull a little bit away from Paul Tracy. Zanardi right behind them, and then Michael Andretti rounding out the top five. I think Zanardi will be cross with himself there, don't you, Guy? That was uh, strange. He gave uh, quite a lot of room there, which Paul Tracy very gratefully said thank you, and away he came. It looked like he may have missed a shift or something on the straightaway because Tracy just zoomed right by him. A Canadian, of course, he won this race last year, looking to make that a repeat. Vassar leading the field over Scott Pruitt. Pruitt's been really delighted with the performance of his car and 
Ford engine through the two days of qualifying here. The Ford engine, as Guy was saying earlier, has worked very nicely for him, and look, he's neatly tucked there underneath Vassar's rear wing, and be looking for his opportunity in due course. We've had a nice steady opening lap, we think, so far. No sign of any incident further down the field. Jimmy Vassar, the 30-year-old, leans over Scott Pruitt, just turned 32. Pruitt in that Firestone uh, sponsored car, basically he is the factory Firestone ride. As they chase down each other, so it's a Firestone Honda Reynard leading a Firestone Lola Ford. And then right behind them, Paul Tracy in a Penske Mercedes Goodyear car. Eight different combinations at Miami took the eight top positions. So we see lots of great racing amongst chassis man uh, manufacturers and engine manufacturers and tire manufacturers really uh, spicing it up in the IndyCar series this year. It really has been a nice level opening with all sorts of people. The Honda obviously coming out strongest of all so far, but the mix of chassis, engine and tires has looked really competitive and we're expecting this whole season when we come back to the circus here in the United States to be just perfect. see the cone, it's, I think it's going to work its way off. It's either going to work its way off or it's going to work the camera off, which uh, would be a pity. camera would be very expensive. We've got that one uh, in-car camera. We've also got in-car cameras with Ray Hall, Michael Andretti, Christian Filippoli, Stephanie Hansen, and Andre Ribeiro today. So we'll have plenty of in-car coverage for you. It seems uh, no, the cone is still in there, but it's not hindering Bash at this point. As he leads over through it. Paul Tracy in third. surface but the actual underlying 
core is, as you can see, throwing the drivers around a little bit. And uh, Vassar is obviously determined to try and pull out a bit of a lead here. Vassar having a great run at this point. He was voted the most improved driver of 1995 by his fellow drivers. So obviously a great a reward for him to pick that up. He's come up through the ranks of American racing, mainly a uh, big star in what is now the Toyota Atlantic Series, the Formula Atlantic, uh, won the West Coast Championship a couple of times, and now is proving very, very strong in the IndyCar Series. 30-year-old Jimmy Bassa leading over Scott Pruitt right now. It's a 65-lap race. We're in lap uh, five right now. Our estimate is fuel window somewhere around about the 22-lap mark should see our first pit stops coming up. The two leaders, though, Pruitt and Bassa, have left from Tracy. Donard is in fourth. Michael Andretti is in fifth. And in sixth position, it's Christian Fittipaldi. We'll be back after this. Back to the Indy World Series with Husqvarna Forest and Garden Products. Back live in the beautiful Gold Coast of Australia, Surface Paradise, round three of the IndyCar Series. And here's a look at the leaderboard, the top ten for you. Vassa, 30 year old, leads over Scott Pruitt. Then Paul Tracy, the Canadian, in third. Alessandro Zanardi out of Italy is fourth. Michael Andretti currently running in fifth position. Christian Fittipaldi, a representative of Brazil, is sixth. Greg Moore, a Canadian, seventh. The Mexican, Adrian Fernandez, is eighth. The Brazilian, Gilles de Ferran, is ninth. Gilles de Ferran, the only guy to have led both races so far this year. Robbie Gordon is tenth. The yellow flags are out for this man, Parker Johnston, who had a fairly major stop uh, making contact with the tyre wall. He is out of the car and OK. A disappointing run for him because he's got one of the most competitive packages, the Honda Firestone Reynard, which Vassar and Zanardi are the only other ones running. He also crashed this morning in the warm-up. In fact, we can show you the uh, crash from this morning in the warm-up for Parker Johnston. Just a disappointing run for them. Here it is this morning in the morning warm-up before the race, Parker Johnston. And same thing, just looked like it didn't have any turning power there at all. Look. So he is out. That's the reason for this yellow flag on lap number 12 of 65. Christopher, just to go back for one second, we talked about Carl Haas, a very charismatic man, is losing the Lola franchise that he's had since 1967. He's very upset about that, obviously. And there's a possibility he's going to keep it through this year. It'll lose it in 97. There's talk of uh, courts and lawsuits all coming into play. But Carl Haas, not being a fool, has backed himself up and said, well, I'll distribute Swift, maybe make an IndyCar Swift chassis, which is owned by Hiro Matsushita. Delara may possibly be coming into IndyCar series, which we mentioned. Emerson Fittipaldi possibly running in the 24 hours of Le Mans, but, but it clashes and he is out of this race. And we'll be back to cover those points and more for you from Indy in just a few moments.
Massa has picked up a point for starting from the pole. He may pick up a point for leading the most laps. It looks like we're getting a green flag this time by as the lights are out on the Porsche pace car here in Australia. Not often seeing a Porsche pace car. Quick update for you. Andre Ribeiro, who started ninth, has fallen way down the field at this point. Uh, must have some kind of problem wrong with his Honda. I think that was when he had either a little off or I think in trying to avoid the Johnston incident, he actually stalled and the marshals had to push start it again. You're right, he then he dropped back in there. We talked about Lola as we get back to go green flag racing. Still that cone hooked up in that the, the rollover bar of Jimmy Vass's car. Pruitt stays right on his tail. And in third, it is Tracy, Zanardi, Michael Andretti, Christian Filippoldi, Greg Moore, who's having a good run once again, a Canadian. Uh, Greg Moore pointed out a great thing about him coming from Indy Lights to IndyCar. Because of the IndyCar package change this year, they reduced downforce by about 35%. It's a lot like driving an Indy Lights car for him. Obviously, a bit more horsepower. And he feels very comfortable. The 20-year-old young Canadian has really just done a tremendous job in his first three races. And indeed, last year in the Indy Lights series, he was dominant on all street circuits. Tremendous performance. And he feels very comfortable in this lower Whoa. down. to see two new chassis in uh, IndyCar then if Haas does bring the Swift in. Of course, Lola also in for a very busy year next year with a new chassis for Indy Lights and Dallara possibly, as we were just saying earlier, coming across from Italy. So as with the new Eagle chassis this year, IndyCar racing just getting bigger, broader and better all the time. More and more new chassis, new engine combinations and so on. Should be seeing some pit stops. For, ooh, did and Tracy I'm not clip sure the wall? that Tracy didn't just clip the wall then. Yes, what you were saying about Pruitt's fascinating. I mean, the man has become Mr. Consistency. He's looking to take over Bobby Rahal's mantle in that title in Indica. And it would appear from one of the reports around the circuit that uh, Jill has had a problem, and that looks like no repetition of the famous Hall victory here at the first ever Surface Paradise. Jill was running ninth as we now ride on board with Michael Andretti trying to get. Uh, only three drivers in the field today have complete have competed in all these IndyCar races. And Here it is, we see Jill Fran and also is that a tangled with no, I think he's tangled with Fernandez. Indeed he has. They were running together in eighth and ninth, and it looked as though Gilles and Adrian got together. That'll be a big disappointment down in South America. Both those men have enormous followings in Brazil and Mexico respectively. Michael Andretti who crashed on the last lap of last year now chases down Paul Tracy. They are about two seconds behind our leader, Jimmy Vassar, Scott Pruitt in second. As we just saw, Gilles de Fran going out with contact with Adrian Fernandez. Uh, Fernandez not having a good year so far this year. Uh, he has been uh, running at the end of two races, but his top finish was an 11th. And uh, here we see a replay now of, it looks like, Fittipaldi trying to make a move down the inside uh, there. And this is where we see Fernandez and de Fran locking up together. And that just looks as though Adrian slightly surprised Gilles by breaking a little early. Robbie Gordon just manages to get through. I can't believe that that will have done Adrian any good. And he's looking. Michael Andretti again, once riding on board with him. Once again, you see that Caltex. That's actually an Australian version of Texaco. And that's why they run that Australian Caltex sticker there just below. Gilles de Fran looks like he was uh, probably just a little bit of wing damage or maybe just to the nose there. You can see the tire mark on the nose. But he is able to get running out and get out again and try and get some points in this third round of the championship as he is uh, doing certainly very well uh, currently in the championship. He was very disappointed though, was he not, with his uh, the run in Rio where through no fault of his own there was a very strange miscalculation on the fuel and poor Ogil ran out of fuel when he was leading the race. Well, he should have won, of course, uh, there. He ran out of fuel, a bad calculation by, surprisingly, the 
the Jim Hall team. He's the only guy to have led both races so far. And that accident we saw all happen as a result of Christian Filippoldi trying to knit down the inside of Alessandro Zanardi just ahead of them too. So we've seen one or two surprises already. Parker Johnson went out and we thought it looked guy, didn't we, as though uh, Parker was having trouble with the understeer there. Both his morning warm-up practice accident and indeed his accident this afternoon were both started by an inability to turn in sharp enough to the left-hand corners there. And that may have been a problem with either the front wing or a problem with the grip, but that's uh, Parker out early having missed already the Miami race, so he's going to have to play catch-up for the I rest of the season. I think that's a case of, uh, in, in this case, not enough front wing probably. And it's going to be so disappointing for him to know that he is the only guy to have the same package as Vassar and Zanardi, and they've been quickest everywhere we've been. Here you see a local yellow, that's for Adrian Fernandez's car, which is still off to the side. Uh, not, not a full course yellow. So it's going to be incredibly irritating for Johnston to know that he's got the power, the chassis and the tyres to be winning these races, and yet crash at Miami. In the, in the not even qualified, not even made the race. Uh, this morning, run in Rio, now out again here in Australia. It's a long way to come to do about four or five laps. A little disheartening for the BRICS Comtech team, which is the merged result of bringing together the BRICS IMSA team with last year's Comtech team, for which Parker ran so effectively. And uh, he's a greatly underrated driver, wouldn't you say? One of, one of the younger Americans who's really going to win a lot. Alessandro Zanardi making their way through. Michael Ander and Ray Hall all the way down to we're through to 12th position right now. Yeah, we've oh, got Christian to say, stalled Christian car. stalled it, and Robbie everybody Gordon stalled it, and the track is now Trying blocked. to get a bump start from Ray Hall, and it's worked. Got a bump start from Ray Hall. Great teamwork there. What a mess. Michael, I cannot sometimes think why you are so impatient. That was never on, that move. That's the first time we've seen that man, Raul Bosell. Look how far back he is in that great car in 12th position. That's a great car, great team. So Let's here take we a look go. And replay. Michael Andretti, take a look down the inside. And I'm afraid it just looks as though he went for a gap that wasn't going to be there the moment that Tracy turned. It has to be said that Tracy was risking it. If you see Michael doing that on the inside of you, that's not the smartest move to try and chop him. And I'm afraid that's going to be that for the Penske. Yes, definitely. The wing's gone and everything's gone. Once again, it looks as though Michael has come off best in an accident, which at least we've got to say he may well have started. Damage and to the rear wing, damage to the front wing. And could a little bit of third. worry that there could be some oil there on the course. But you see, Michael, we saw him locking up that same wheel earlier on in the race. And look, the moment he stopped his cadence braking, bang. Back to the IndyCar series, live with Bridgestone, the science of performance. As we rejoin the action in Surfers Paradise, Paul Tracy, the victim of an ambitious overtaking manoeuvre by Michael Andretti, and Tracy is out of the race. He waited by the car for Michael to come by, just to give him that universal gesture of friendship that Formula One viewers would recognise from Heinz Harold Frensen in Adelaide. So, Mauricio Guzman has just crashed out, but Paul Tracy still in the race as we rejoin our American team. Now by Al Unser Jr. Al Unser Jr. worked his way up into third spot. Had a great run at Rio. That's why he's in third in the championship right now. And we talked about Roger Penske, his team owner. Some big news for him. Christopher, we'll let you share that with us. Yes, indeed. Earlier this week, uh, to the delight of the New York and international financial community, Penske's uh, International Motor Speedway's operation was uh, officially floated with enormous excitement. Uh, the subscription, the shares were 20 times oversubscribed and immediately moved to a very strong premium. So Pence successful on the track, successful of course in his $5 billion turnover business, which covers every form of transportation from Detroit Diesel through to a massive truck le leasing operation in the United States, um, has had a very successful debut for its motor speedways operation on the New York Stock Exchange, including the new Fontana 
Nassau Speedway, which of course is very much part of that, and that's being built out in California and will be expecting to be holding an IndyCar race very shortly. It's already been awarded a NASCAR race, which as far as North American racing is concerned is the bee's knees, so he's going to be very happy with that, and obviously that uh, stock just responding extremely well on the stock market. They went out originally, I believe, at about seven or eight dollars, and it went straight up to thirty-four dollars. I knew I should have had an inside line on that one. Unfortunately, no I didn't. one's ever lost money following what Roger Penske does. No, that's true. And, uh, Alan's a junior. Uh, certainly found an inside line with the Roger Penske team. He is a two-time IndyCar World Champion, currently running in third, ahead of Alessandro Zanardi right now, and then Greg Moore in fifth, in number 99, the Canadian sensation, having a great run this year. It's worth stressing, really, uh, what a great job Greg Moore has done. The first day practice, he was uh, only 19th fastest guy, and he and uh, his team went away and had a little think about it. Moore said there was more in it for him, that he could try a little harder. They tweaked the chassis a little bit, and he came straight out, and there we see him running just behind Alex Zanardi and looking very strong. He's up to fifth, and he's only about 13 seconds back from the leader. We'll pick up Greg Moore, the Canadian, a 20-year-old. Uh, had a great run going at Miami, a superb run going at Rio. Some problems for them there. And uh, now, though, he's driven his way up into fifth position. He's only 20 years old. He's come from the Indy Light Series, where he won 10 of 12 races last year. He was actually under contract, though, to the Forsyth team. And now uh, we see Juan Manuel Fangio, I believe, back in the pits with that Castrol sponsorship. As I mentioned, uh, the director of Castrol said, the reason we've gone on, even though we know that they're a development team, development car, is uh, A, their involvement with the World Rally Championship, and Castrol is huge in Asia. And the big thing for them was the fact that the international coverage that the IndyCar gets. And of course, that deal uh, brokered by uh, Mr. Sponsorship himself and the author of the most fascinating book on motor racing sponsorship, the Britain guy, Edwards. Doesn't help me get a penny. <laughs> <laughs> read it again, guy. Read the book again. Oh, I only read the front cover. Jimmy Vassar continues to lead over Scott Pruitt, Alessandro Jr. third, Alessandro Zanardi is fourth. Just to go through the international field for you, Gilles de Fran is in seventh, Stephanie Johansson in tenth, Ralph Osell is in twelfth, struggling again, uh, Carlos Guerrero in thirteenth, um, uh, Roberto Moreno is in sixteenth, Andre Ribeiro in seventeenth, Piero Matishida in eighteenth, uh, Mauricio Guzman one lap down in 19th, as is Emerson Fittipaldi. Just to run down the top 20 for you here. Uh, of course, Paul Tracy out, Parker Johnson is also out, and Adrian Fernandez also out. We understand Fernandez may have actually uh, hurt his wrist in that accident. Yes, that looked as though um, what happened there was that when he got tapped from behind, uh, the steering wheel flicked round, and that can often happen. Uh, happened famously many years ago when Jackie Stewart had to miss great chunks of a Formula One season with a. Uh, uh, wrist in plaster for exactly that reason, sort of whiplash back from the steering wheel, and it looks like Adrian's got that trouble now. Vassar continuing, and it looks as though he's pulling away a little bit from Pro. Uh, he's, he's certainly cushioning his gap to about 2.89 seconds right now over Pruitt. Pruitt probably hoping for pit stops to come up, a yellow maybe make some adjustments to his car. You mentioned, mentioned Jackie Stewart, another very famous ex-Formula One driver here this weekend, of course, Sir Jack Brown. Yes, wonderful to see him here in Queensland, and uh, Sir Jack has been demonstrating his uh, famous 1961 Indianapolis 500 Cooper Climax. This one he raced, of course, 35 years ago at Indianapolis, and he did some demonstration laps. That came over on the 747s with the rest of these cars, which from the actually... museum at Indianapolis, and of course that was the car that set the whole small, low-light rear-engine trend later picked up so effectively by Colin Chapman, which is what started the British-built rear-ended revolution, which is what we still see carried through here in today's Indy cars, with all but the AAR Toyota Eagle being built in Britain, the Penske's, the Lola's, and the Reynard's. The great business for them. Michael Andretti was involved in an accident with Paul Tracy earlier. We saw what Paul Tracy thought of it. Let's find out now what he has to say about his crash with Michael. Paul Tracy has made his way down to the garage area. Now, Paul, we had a, a look at it from the onboard of Michael's. How did it unfold from your perspective? Well, at first, some, the Marlboro car was running great. We made a good start. I was pacing myself, saving the brakes, getting good fuel mileage, and, and 
Michael is just textbook, isn't it? I mean, he just comes comes along and locks up and hits you from behind and spins you around. And uh, you know, it's disappointing for the team, but but uh, it's got to stop. You know, it's, it has to stop. Well, we hope for better fortune at Long Beach, but I know you're very concerned about the lack of points so far. I, I am. It's uh, disappointing for the team, but uh, hopefully we do well at Long Beach. Thanks. And that was really very interesting. Paul looked as though a little towel and a glass of cold water might have cooled him down. He was being quite diplomatic there. Here we see Michael. Um, I don't think he would be very diplomatic when he said it's a textbook maneuver by a textbook maneuver. What I mean was he was talking about the disappointment from the team and so on. Um, Paul is also noted for a fairly quick temper. Interesting to see that he appears to have lost the little Rasputin type beard guy, which I think we're probably happy to see. Yeah, here, the goatee he was wearing there. And, uh, that was. Uh, him and he said it was to make him feel like a little tougher and act a little tougher out on the track and of course poor Tracy and Michael Andretti I mean last year we had a case of one complaint about the other one and they both lodged complaints it turned out that it had 12 complaints each but lodged by other drivers against them so they're both known for touching and getting together but I think poor Tracy makes a very good point it's a textbook maneuver by Michael Andretti we've seen it happen before and of course it's always a case where Michael Andretti is able to carry on racing the guy he makes contact with goes out it certainly seemed that way this time and there are a number of people including famously poor al uh, jr at the Cup last year who would uh, like to have a similar word with michael so well, let's see how this develops but at the moment uh, he's uh, fallen back of course as a result of his stop and go down to 11th place now but he's still looking hot and he's still looking strong and did you see him there carving his way back up through the field come up behind Stefan Johansson who's got Brian Herter in front of him and uh, that may slow his progress a little bit but he and came carving back through from where he was. You previously mentioned Stefan Johansson disappointing year because he switched they used to run a year old Penske chassis well this year they've gone to Reynard they got the Mercedes oh Michael locking him up again uh, as he tries to make a move on your hands and we'll see if he was able to do it but Johansson just not running anything like as strong as he should be he raced Formula 1 of course for the McLaren team and, okay, the Ferrari team and the Ferrari team and just not performing as well as I think everyone would expect for him and the Alamax company they've spent more money new paint scheme this year huge new shot for the Tony Bettenhausen team their budget obviously not as big as a lot of the other teams but uh, just a disappointment for the Swede Stefan Johansson as we now ride on board once again with Michael Andretti talking to the Swede Stefan Johansson 15 international drivers representing seven countries here this weekend. Uh, we've also got 10 cars on Firestone, 15 cars on Goodyear. We've got three Penske chassis, one Eagle, 12 Raynards, nine Lolas, which is what we're riding on board with Michael Andretti right now. Six Hondas, nine Ford engines, eight Mercedes, and two Toyota. What a great diversity of chassis, manufacturers, tires, and countries. And of course, that all leads to the new championship. We have a manufacturer's championship, a constructor's championship, and a, US, and a Nations Cup. As we look again, once more, at Michael trying to get by Johansson. And this is a, a classic Michael manoeuvre. You see the helmet tucking down determinedly inside, and he's all locked up, and only just manages to get that round. What the American engineers called a uh, push, but uh, known worldwide as understeer there. And Michael, are really very lucky just to squeeze by Stefan Johansson without any. Johansson's staying right with him, actually, too. Yes, he certainly is. What you were just saying about the uh, Bettenhausen Motorsports team there with the backing from Alimax is that Stefan may well be in his last season, so the rumor goes. He's, um, no one's saying he's not still competitive and keen, but this is a small team, relatively underfinanced compared to some others. But nevertheless, with a state-of-the-art chassis, we would have expected to see him consistently a little higher. It's not been kind to him so far. Uh, interestingly, also, we just have to comment here, Guy, that um, as Michael was going round, and indeed as he came in to do his stop and go, you could hear the crowd quite vociferously giving him the bird there. Yeah, they're not very happy with that result. Uh, they get together with Paul Tracy. Scott Pruitt now dropped back as we uh, follow him to about five seconds behind our leader, Jimmy Vassar, who has led 30 of the 65 laps. Uh, a couple more laps, and he will pick up a bonus point for leading the most laps. And there's Pruitt, second, Hunter Jr., third. Zanardi is fourth still. Greg Moore in fifth. Bobby Ray Hall in sixth. Mr. Consistency in seventh. It's Gilbert Brand after the spin with Fernandez and almost getting involved in another incident uh, with Mauricio Guzman. He's managed to stay out there in seventh. Good run for him. Gordon has now worked his way up to eighth. Brian Herter now in ninth. And Michael Andretti fought his way back up into tenth. That's Christian Fittipaldi. 
Tenardi, and we have reports that Tenardi is slowing down. Yes, as we said, Christian here has held his position. I mean, yes, he's now um, a lap behind, but he's not lost any ground to Al, who's been chasing him through there. And Christian's had a good weekend demonstrating speed, consistency, and a sensible approach. And uh, as we were saying earlier, his performance in Rio was really something of a revelation. Now, it looks as though Zanardi is dropping back, and some kind of mechanical problem and we're just trying to find out exactly what that problem is but he has really made a tremendous IndyCar debut over these last three races and he's looked very competitive today but there you see both from the body language and what he's doing with the visor he's got a puncher he's got the one side of the car appear to be all Michael Andretti back in the pits as well and this is uh, certainly unscheduled pit stop we see a BPG IndyCar official there I don't know if he's been pulled in. No, he's got. Looks like they're going to be taking off the uh, rear bodywork of the car. The computer's been plugged in there. Yeah. Yep. There's clearly a problem, and I doubt whether many people in the Paul Tracy pit will be weeping uh, tears there to see that happen. Zanardi is now coming in, and I don't see a seems problem. Maybe still under power. Maybe a transmission problem. That seems to be a problem here uh, previously as we've raced in Australia. But both Alessandro Zanardi and Michael Andretti. And we're getting out. confirmation, Guy, that proves um, your exactly accurate prediction that that is indeed a gearbox problem there for Zanardi. That's what he radioed in with, and immediately the engine is swarming all over the back of the car. But it doesn't look as though Alex intends oh, to do deal. very much more today. So that's off for an early shower and a chance to look at Queensland's beautiful beaches. Early shower, but no early flight, unfortunately, because the next race for these guys will be Long Beach coming up in just a couple of weeks as we go to another street course, very similar to this one, but the cars, of course, are going to be flown back from Australia. Two 747s are hired to bring all these cars back. Not as many went as we expected, and hopefully, we have talked about at the beginning of the show, Mark Blundell is here at the race in a plaster watching, supporting Mauricio Guzman, but uh, is not racing. His car didn't go. His car went back to England to be looked at. But hopefully we're going to have a word with Mark Blundell later on in the show. Pruitt, who uh, understanding, is slowing down, but he's basically turned the boost down just a little bit, or down the leanness down a bit, trying to save fuel possibly, as he's going to wait to try and get to the next yellow flag before making his pit stop. 32 laps of complete, fastest lap of the race so far by our leader, Jimmy Vassar, at 102.8 miles per hour. We also have reports that Jimmy Vassar's having communication problems with his crew. So whether he's going to find out about Zanardi's transmission or not is going to be uh, determined through that. So as we get about halfway through this race, Christopher, problems cropping up for Pruitt, Vassar, now Zanardi, and Michael Andretti also in the pit. Greg Moore coming up to fourth position. Yes, Moore looking very strong, but it has to be said, it's always been a tough course. A tough course on gearboxes, the walls are very hard and very close, and with 30% less downforce this year, a lot of people are discovering how easy it is to tap that wall. And talking about tapping walls, Mark Blundell, you were just mentioning, yes, he has been here in order to cheer on Mauricio Guzman, not that unfortunately that's done the team a great deal of good, because Mauricio, of course, is now out. But um, Mark has now been able to tell us a little bit more about what happened there in Rio. Well, I know you spoke to a good friend. Oh, Bobby Rahal with troubles too, as he slows down on course. This could bring out a full course yellow if he's nowhere near the pits. That side pod damage there, is it? Can I see? Oh, he's made it into the pits safely. Yep. Anyway, just going back, I know you spoke to a good friend of ours, uh, an old pal boy, Perry McCarthy, back in England, a good friend of Mark Blundell's. Perry McCarthy and uh, Mark Blundell. The greatest piano players I've seen, by the way. <laughs> Here's yeah. a replay. Uh, we'll get on that story in just a second. Replay of Ray Hall locking up the left front. Uh, we've seen this happen to Johansson. We've seen it happen to Johnston. We've seen it happen to Guzman. From there, we don't see what happens. But uh, looking... Uh, 
slightly terminal as the back end of that car is coming off. Yep. Now, we've seen, this is a Reynard, we've seen with problems. Zanardi was a Reynard with problems. If you remember last year, Reynard had trouble with transmission problems. Rahal's out of the car, uh, so his day is done. Uh, we'll try and get a report as to what his problem is. This is, of course, totally changing the top ten, so I'll run down it very quickly for you. Vassal leads by about seven seconds over Pruitt. Then Al Anser Jr., Greg Moore, Gilles de Fran in fifth, Robbie Gordon in sixth, Brian Herter in seventh, Stephanie of Hansen now in eighth. Ralph Bosell works his way up to ninth. And get this, Carlos Guerrero is in tenth. To be fair, Carlos Guerrero um, having a reputation as, as, as something of a backmarker on the street circuits has been running very strongly for him all day today. And good for him up there in the top ten in the Herdez sponsored uh, Mexican back Dick Simon run car. Continues to impress. Now he's up in fourth place. He's only about 25 seconds down on the leader. It would only take a yellow for that to really, of course, narrow right down and for Greg to be back in there with a chance. We were talking about Mark Blundell earlier, just before that latest little round of excitements with Bobby Rahal. And uh, yes, indeed, we're talking with uh, Perry McCarthy the other day, a great friend of Mark Blundell's, of course, a great racer with him in many of the championships up through the international ladder for many years in the late 80s and early 90s. Perry said that Mark really was quite perturbed by that big smack into the wall. It was a brake failure. The team has accepted complete responsibility and put out really very brave. You have to admire them, Guy, for the statement they put out to admit brake failure completely. Mark actually hit the wall of what the telemetry showed to be 199 miles an hour. And uh, a lot of people here already we're now seeing out of the race. That's Paul Tracy, Adrian Fernandez, as we saw, and Sonadi and Ray Hall are the two most recent dropouts. We don't know exactly why Ray Hall dropped out, but we'll try and get an update for you on that. And just to finish up that story, Perry McCarthy, good news for him. He signed a deal to do some racing. Terrific news for him. Perry has got the number one seat alongside Jan Lammers in the works Lotus, the new Lotus with the V8 engine, the Lotus designed in-house uh, V8 engine in the very, very competitive GT1 series, including Le Mans and all the other famous races along there with the McLarens and the Ferraris, and that's going to be very good for Perry after his very difficult Formula One spell with the Andrea Motor cars. Great news for him. Great news for Jimmy Vassar as he continues to lead. He's now led 39, uh, 35 laps. Uh, this will give him a bonus point for leading the most laps today, along with his bonus point for taking the pole. Right now, at this point, he is the individual points leader over Scott Pruitt by 1.27 to 26. There you see Alan Jr. in third. Christian Fittipaldi also in that picture, but Christian Fittipaldi uh, is actually a lap down in 17th position. Remember, he stalled it after coming across the accident earlier between uh, Tracy and Michael Andretti. But given the way that Christian's been running, I wouldn't be surprised to see him working his way back up through the field there. And indeed, similarly for Andre Riviera in front of him at the moment, Matsushita and one or two others shouldn't be too difficult for them to have to deal with. Back to the IndyCar World Series with... Husqvarna Forest and Garden Products. Mark Blundell disappointed to be just a spectator in Australia. Let's hear from him now. And three fractures in my foot, not just one. And my lungs and ribs collided. More the cartilage muscle and the rib cage is stretched out. Now we've just had a chance to look at the replay. Have you watched that yourself? Have you now had a chance to see how horrifying that crash was? I watched it two times. I turned off the TV. I don't want to see it anymore. That was a horrifying crash, and you had high praise for these Indy cars taking that kind of impact. Oh, fantastic. I mean, I, I thank the guys at Reynard. What a great car. I mean, uh, I'm lucky to be alive. But 200 mile an hour incident, that was a big one. Now, you're in a cast now. When might we see you back in a race car? Honestly and realistically, I think maybe uh, Nazareth. Unfortunately, I'm going to miss out the two road circuits here and uh, Long Beach. All right. Well, I know Ovals may not be the first place to start, but we look forward to seeing it in Nazareth. Mark Blundell had that quick the 200 years. miles per hour in the wall at Nazareth. We saw at, at uh, Rio. We saw it replayed there. Poor guy gets to miss the street race where he thought he'd be really good. Now it sounds like he's going to miss Long Beach, which means his next race will be an oval. Guess what?
as we were saying earlier on, we did gather on the phone from England earlier on this week that uh, the incident had hurt Mark's foot more than he thought it had. There were more bones broken than was originally thought to be the case, not surprising. And he was just telling us there, which is also not surprising, when you have a 199 mile an hour to zero up against a concrete wall impact, that the seat belts that the seatbelts really pressed him up against uh, his rib cage, and that he's got all sorts of muscular and tissue damage there. And uh, Mark uh, is going to take a little longer to get back than we thought he would do, but our best wishes with him and to the Pac West team to get out there again as soon as they can. They still have Mauricio Guzman running in fifth place. 13 laps remain here at Australia. Jimmy Vassar leads over Scott Pruitt and Greg Moore. Just to round off, we were talking about a manufacturer's championship. Honda leads out over Ford uh, quite handily at this point. Firestone, of course, have won both races so far in the Indy Series. So have Honda. Uh, pardon me, uh, Honda won. Uh, yeah, Honda have won both races. Reynard have won one. Lola have won one. And in the rookie standings, uh, Alessandro Zanardi leads out over Greg Moore. Well, with this finish, Greg Moore will take over the lead in the rookie championship. And in the Nations Cup, uh, USA is tied with Brazil at the moment with 36 points, but looking good for USA today as far as that championship is concerned. Alan Jr. blistering his way through the field, Christopher. Very tight and competitive back here in what we were just calling the Brazilian bunch of Brazil, Guzelman, De Ferran and Christian Fittipaldi, because they're now in the middle of it is Al Jr. as always timing his run, coming on through there, not necessarily perfectly what he would have wanted to have done with the various incidents that have befallen him today, but nevertheless looking very strong. And we wouldn't be surprised to see him squeezing past the Hollywood cigarette-sponsored car of Mauricio Guzman very shortly indeed. The Albuquerque, New Mexico resident, Alan Jr., two-time IndyCar champion, is mixing it up with Gilles de Fran, Raul Bosel, and Mauricio Guzman, the Brazilian boys, be me calling you. April the 1st. Now, it's interesting to hear Mark Blundell also saying that he's going to miss Long Beach because well, that's another circuit we would have expected him to do well. We will also expect Zanardi to do well at Long Beach and Greg Moore. And Greg Moore is the man of those three, of the three rookies who is running strongest, of course, because he's still there looking strong in the third. So far, Greg Moore has not been to a track that he's ever driven on before. Long, Long Beach, Beach, he knows. Been, yeah, and he's won him. Sure race from Jimmy. His mum's here this weekend helping him run this race because she wouldn't miss a chance to go to Australia. Unfortunately for Jimmy, last time his mum attended a race was in Portland, Oregon, when he was awarded the win. Oh, we had a little trouble. You mentioned the problem with the gearbox. And I think you'll find that's what his problem was. There are no gears as he came up. You could see the gears weren't slowing him. That was straight on the brakes. And that's evidence of what we were suspecting about the transmission problem. Further, he's not going to be able to get out of there because I suspect he won't be able to select the first kick. I believe there may be a little bit of a run. No, there is no runoff area there, so you're right. He may be stuck there, which means we may get another... Oh, they may be able to whip him around that corner there, but we may get another yellow flag. With 11 laps to go, a yellow flag now could be very interesting. Once again, Jimmy Vassar, having eked out the lead that he has, he is going to find himself perhaps being closed down a little more quickly than he would want by Pruitt and Craig we Moore. Always, we always talk at these races, Chris, for about 20 points being on the line for a win. Of course, on the weekend, there's 22 points on the line. One for the pole, bonus point, one for leading the most laps. Well, Vassar has got both of those points so far this weekend, and it's looking like he's on his way to get another 20 points, although Pruitt, who is tied with him in the championship right now, uh, will pick up 16 and keep the championship very, very close. So Vassar, Pruitt, Moore lead it. Bosell is fourth, Guzman fifth, Gilles de Ferran sixth, Christian Fittipaldi seventh, Stephanie Johansson is eighth. In ninth, it's Eddie Lawson. Ribeiro was in tenth before that problem. Moreno in eleventh, Allen's a junior in twelfth. Junior trying to pick up a couple of positions 
He's battling in with all those uh, Brazilian guys and has dropped back dramatically in uh, the last lap or so. I don't know if he had a problem or in fact if they weren't in fact battling, but in fact that they're a lap ahead of him because of that problem he had with Gilles de Ferran. That's probably the right way around. Jimmy's still looking very strong and he is... Let's just see how our leader and now the championship leader here at the tremendously exciting and close street circuit surface paradise. His teammate had a transmission problem as we ride on board with Jimmy Bassa. Let's see if we can hear any or detect any kind of problems with his transmission. It doesn't sound like right. Nicely through the gears into the left-hander. Back on the power very quickly. He seems to be uh, just fine in that car at this point. He wasn't either. Uh, we talked about Scott Pruitt. certainly was having gearbox trouble that has now led to him having to slip, slide out uh, at uh, the sharp left hand. Back through the gears for 30 year old Jimmy Vassar looking to get his second IndyCar win, his first coming at Miami at the season opener. But this could be a great boost to his championship hopes in 1996. There you get a good look of the rundown of the top five, in fact the top ten for you, after 55 or 65 laps, just ten remaining in Australia. Surface Paradise in Queensland, site of round three of the 1996 PPG IndyCar World Series. It's been a great uh, race here for the last five years, and once again, in its sixth year, proving to be that way, although Vassar and Pruitt pretty much dominated all day long. With nine laps to go, Scott Pruitt is about three seconds behind Jimmy Vassar, Greg Moore is in third, Ralph Bosell is in fourth, and Mauricio Guzman is in fifth position. Guy Hobbs and Christopher Tate live ESPN coverage for you. A reminder, we'll have more live coverage of the IndyCar series coming your way in just a couple of weeks from the street course in Long Beach, California. Be sure to catch that and we would love to see Mark Blundell back in the car for that. It doesn't sound as though he will make it though and that'll be Nazareth which will be two weeks after Long Beach and then after that we make our run on the US 500 and the problems with the IRL and the Indy 500 all that coming to fruition in May of 1996, not far down the road. The IRL, of course, just ran their second race of the year last weekend at Phoenix, um, which was won by Ariel Leyendijk, a winner at Indianapolis a few years ago, in a uh, mixed quality field. He also won at Phoenix previously in the Indy cars, and of course he now makes Phoenix his home. So for all the folks over in Europe who are following Ariel Leyendijk, he's doing...
series with Husqvarna Forest and Garden Products. Here we are on board with our leader, Jimmy Vassar. And Jimmy has run a steady race. He's now just got to take it carefully. Well, when I say steady race, he's run a very impressive race. Very impressive. No mistakes, no errors. There uh, have been a lot of incidents around him. been a lot of traffic. And he has found his way through it nicely. And just he's had the fastest lap. Uh, he said it twice. And in fact, the last time he said it was back on lap 25. And he's led pretty much the entire way. Picked up some bonus points. Great run for the 30-year-old Jimmy Vassar. And we went into this uh, race with Pruitt and Vassar at the top of the championship table. It looks very much as though we're going to go on and back to the United States, back to Long Beach in two weeks' time, with those two very much at the top of the table, uh, barring any problems. Now, the person, of course, who's made the greatest improvement over the weekend, if you like, having uh, 19th place at the end of first practice, moved up to a final qualification of 8th place, Greg Moore. Greg Moore is now running third. Vassar and Pruitt, having qualified on the front row, pretty much kept where they wanted to be over the course of the weekend. Greg Moore's improvement, very noticeable, as is also Raul Bozell's, who's moved up from 15th. Now, here's an interesting scenario. In America, the drinking age, the legal drinking age, is 21. Greg Moore's going to make the podium today in Australia. I'm not sure what their drinking age is down there, but he will be allowed to... Uh, about 10, is it? <laughs> right, in Australia, it is. I don't think anyone's too worried about the little tinnies they get to drink there, and I'd be very surprised if anyone um, officially to, tries yeah. to stop that young man tasting the champagne. He will be able to uh, neck a tube of Foster's after this race in Australia. And if he were finished on the podium here in America, of course, he would not be allowed to, uh, to sip the champagne that is handed out at the end of the event. Uh, Curious what it is you could be old enough to do on the one hand and not on the other, isn't it? He can drive a 200 miles per hour, collect a ton of money, and uh, some great points in the championship. Well, you're not allowed to drink champagne. Well, Craig, that's not going to be your problem for very much longer. Vassar, Pruitt, Moore, Bosel, Guzman are the top five. Dufran, Fittipaldi, Johansson, Eddie Lawson, and Andre Ribeiro continue to be the top ten. Alex Jr. now up to 11th position. Uh, let's just run down the, through the Matashita and Moreno. Then out of the race, Carlos Guerrero, Robbie Gordon, we don't know what happened. We don't have a report from the Gor uh, Gordon pit, what happened to him, but disappointed, no points this weekend. Brian Herger is out. Juan Manuel Fangio is out after making contact. Jeff Krosnoff is out after hitting the wall. Michael Andretti went out with some kind of computer and electrical problem. Bobby Rahal went out. We're not sure why. Also, Fernandez is out, along with uh, Paul Tracy, Parker Johnston, Alessandro Zanardi, and Krosnoff. So those guys are all out of this event. The ones that are in it, Vassar Pruitt and Moore, one, two, and three, with six laps remaining. They should be able to get this race in underneath the two-hour time limit that they are designated in IndyCar. Yes, we're on 59 out of 65 laps, and there are uh, about eight minutes yet left to run, so uh, it should be possible I to do it. I think the thing we must just note here is that this group here, the boys from Brazil, as we were calling them earlier on, Brazil, followed by Guzmik, followed by De Varane, followed by Christian Fittipaldi, are at it hammer and tongs here, and indeed in their efforts are spurring Raul Brazil on to close in a little bit on Greg Moore. such a strong team, this is the year he must get results. The 87 World Sports Car Champion, runner in IndyCar for many, many years now, and of course formerly in Formula 1 with the Ligier, and before that the March team. Um, but now, here we go, he's, he's up there in fourth place, he's carrying number one, which of course he inherited uh, by moving into the team that Jacques Villeneuve had taken to the championship in 95. He's uh, running a much stronger race than perhaps we suspected. And he's holding off uh, Guzelman and De Ferran. Guzelman has just nipped by uh, De Ferran there. And it, it's been a little tight there all the time. Christian Fittipaldi playing a watching brief back at the back of that four of the boys from Brazil. A good battle going on between the, as you say, boys from Brazil, the boys from the USA lead it right now. Safety in case things start going wrong. If we're going to get this close to finishing the race, to, 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 to 
hours, they'll let it run its full 65 laps. And it's nice to see those five laps remaining uh, here. And once again, Bass is still with the fastest time and the fastest lap. And he's picked up the bonus points for the pole, and he picked up the points also for leading the most laps. Guzman, as you mentioned, got past Gilles de Fran, and I believe he's also managed to make it past Raoul Yes, we so. think that around the back of the circuit there, he has managed to get past Raoul Bozel. And there are some tense faces here in the uh, house fire and, and the Firestone team and the Pat Patrick Pitt. Maybe problems with Pruitt. Maybe problems with Pruitt. Uh, last minute transmission, maybe tires. You saw the Firestone guys all getting together there. Only five laps remaining. Bosell has just dropped off the leaderboard and he's gone back to eighth position. He may well be out of this race. Maybe terminal problems with Christopher, the kiss of death. I'm again. afraid that clearly was almost the Murray Walker treatment there. I'm afraid. in Rio. Puts Lawson up to eight. Here's Bosell on the left of Vassar right now. Vassar goes by. Yep, so Bosell trying to work his way back to the pit area. Here is Vassar. Well, it may all have been getting a little bit marginal on the fuel for Bosell's team there. Um, apparently he's radioed to the pits and said it's a pickup problem. Um, and again, there must be something that somebody knows here. The guy that's showing us these worried looks in the Pat Patrick trip. Maybe Trump for Scott Pro. We'll see if we can hear anything. From his car. Don't forget, of course, Gilles de Fran, fellow Brazilian, ran out of fuel in Rio two weeks ago while leading. Bosel looking for his best result of the year uh, here in Australia. Australia. And there's another Brazilian slowing there on the inside. That was Roberto Moreno, who's also just slipped away, had been lying 10th, now back to 13th, and uh, falling away there, obviously, with some sort of mechanical problem as well. I, I just tried to figure out all the uh, points for the championship, and of course, Chris Rosado got it all marked down, and suddenly everybody's disappearing off the leaderboard. It always happens that way. Except for our leader, Jimmy Bassett, 12 seconds ahead of Scott Pruitt. Pruitt was three seconds behind. He has obviously turned the wick down a lot, backed off, and trying to nurse that car uh, to the finish here. But Greg Moore also obviously having to do the same thing because he has not been threatening Pruitt for that second position. Although now Moore starting to make up some ground on Scott Pruitt. Moore had dropped back quite a bit. So Greg Moore, the Canadian, looking definitely for a podium finish, but can he get a second place finish? 62 laps in the book. 63. Here we see Guzman and Gilles de Ferran uh, racing. Bosel has gone from this lineup at this point. Christian Fittipaldi behind them in sixth position. And Christian dropping back just a little bit there, guy. And interesting to see. Greg Moore is really going to be up there giving Pruitt a hard time. This race has really had everything. Constant incident. And despite the fact that Vassar and Pruitt have been dominant, undoubtedly dominant, and a very good result for them throughout, uh, nevertheless, such a competitive series. Practice times again very, very close and uh, really a great deal of action throughout this race. Gilles de Ferran hoping that he can get back up there. He wouldn't mind the extra points, but uh, Guzelman may yet get the fourth place for Packer. Now working lap 64, Jimmy Vassar leading in his target Ganassi Firestone Reynard Honda car. Uh, the American driver over fellow American Scott Pruitt uh, in a low For more than about two seconds, Greg Moore definitely trying to get his first podium finish, but will it be in a second position or third position? Guzman in fourth, the Fran in fifth, Christian from Poli sixth, Stephanie Johansson seventh, Eddie Lawson in eighth, Andre Ribeiro in ninth, and Alan Junior works his way up to tenth position. Still a very strong run for uh, Eddie Lawson there. The ex motorcyclist had been up as high as fifth, but um, with the reshuffles that have happened in the last few laps, um, he's found himself satisfactory result for him. Yep, Al Unser Jr. never say die. The Penske team as always there and uh, he'll welcome those points from the top 10 finish. 11 and a half seconds Vassar's now got over Pruitt and um, he doesn't seem to be under any threat at all. Now the only question is, is Greg Moore going to be able to close Pruitt down and actually do something about it before the end of the race which is just about a lap and a half away from those two. Still
still a good battle, still a good battle going on between Jill de Fran and Mauricio Guzman, although we now hear a report from around the track that de Fran has gone out after three contacts and surviving, working his way back up through the field. De Fran may be out. I yeah, hope quite for, like that for Jimmy Basson. And I hope for everybody's sake back there in the whole pit that de Fran's problem is not fuel shortage. and garden products. Surface Paradise winner and new IndyCar Championship leader Jimmy Vassar. There he is. Let's join our colleagues over in Australia. The Grand Prix of Long Beach. Will we see him repeat there? Jimmy Vassar for now owns Australia. It was well worth the trip for this San Francisco native to go to Australia and pick up the maximum really? 22 Without points. Really? Without any concrete His result. Was there. Jack just Roo, believe maybe he see is there. He thought if he We're gave him the racing car to do the Jimmy business, Vassar before we disappear, but make sure you join us once again in two weeks uh, from, from Paul Long to Beach. What a ride. It was great. I got to say, this is the best race car I've ever had. It just did everything perfect. We made it. We had to make a change for engine cooling right before the start. We were a little worried about it, but I got to hand it to my whole Target Ganassi crew. They made the right call. The right call. It was just the, the most beautiful race car. I wanted to keep going. It was so nice to drive. It was just great. I got. I would all to the team. Were there any problems with the car at all? We thought there might have been some sort of transmission or gearbox problem. It started getting a little sticky, but it didn't get any worse. And I, uh, I got a little bit of a lead there, so I started just trying to make sure I take care of the automobile. All right, your first trip to the, or not your first trip to the Gold Coast, but the first win here. Four trips, taken five years for it. Feels great. It's a beautiful place down here. I just hope we can keep coming in the future. All right, Jimmy Vassar wants to keep coming in. As you saw, he wanted to keep racing at yeah, the end of we, the race. When we saw him, what you just called us is slowing down your cooling down lap. In fact, he was doing anything, anything but. He was bouncing off the curbs, waving his hands in the air. He was having a great time. Good so, result. In the points, Vassar leads with 47. Pruitt is second with 42. And then it's a step back to Al Hunter Jr. with 25 points, who is tied with Andre Ribeiro. And then Dufran with 21. And then a whole slew of guys, Ray Hall, Gordon, Zanardi, and Fittipaldi, all around the 18. 14 mark. It's been a great race. Christopher Tate, thanks for being with us today. My pleasure. What an enjoyable race. It always is at surface. All right, and we'll see you live from Long Beach in a couple of weeks. For everybody at ESPN, this is Guy Hobbs saying so long and see you at Long Beach. World Series was brought to you by Husqvarna Forest and Garden Products Bridgestone The Science of Performance and Valvoline Motor Oil